Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be continuing our discussion around the casting of the much hyped HBO reboot of the Harry Potter series. To date, I've covered many of the main characters introduced in the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets, so in today's video I'll be focusing on some of the central characters from one of my personal favourites, the Prisoner of Azkaban. Let's get started. Aunt Marge A fairly inconsequential yet hard to forget character, you likely remember the rather rude sister of Vernon Dursley, Aunt Marge. Featured only in the beginning of the Prisoner of Azkaban, Marge's lack of compassion and general demeanour towards an orphaned Harry is incredibly offensive, and ultimately leads to her being blown up like a balloon by Harry's use of inadvertent magic. In the films, Aunt Marge, or Marjorie Eileen Dursley if you will, was portrayed by German actress Pam Ferris. I had absolutely no complaints about this casting at the time. I thought Pam was quite entertaining in the role, and she did a terrific job of making me hate her. So, in recasting Aunt Marge, I'd be tempted to give the role to another actress who I know could absolutely nail the callousness and self-righteousness of Marge, Margot Martindale. Margot has appeared in an incredible amount of film and television, and has brought characters similar to Aunt Marge to life with great results. I personally feel that she would also be able to bring a certain amount of agreeability to the role, which would make her very interesting to watch indeed. My only hesitation is the fact that she's American, and I can't comment on her ability to do an English accent. She may also be a little on the older side to play Aunt Marge, but this will largely depend on who they cast as Petunia and Vernon Dursley. Sirius Black In the original film, Sirius Black, Harry's estranged godfather and former member of the Marauders, was played by none other than Gary Oldman. While I have nothing against Gary Oldman and his performance of Sirius, the casting to me never felt quite right. Of course, much of this had to do with his age. In the novels, Sirius was meant to be in his early 30s, and while it's true that he was described as having undergone a fair bit of physical trauma, due in large part to his time spent in Azkaban amongst the soul-sucking Dementors, he was still said to be darkly handsome, casually elegant, and well, young. While I do understand the choice to cast an older actor, the filmmakers would have needed to age Sirius up to align with Alan Rickman's Severus Snape, as I said, it just never quite worked for me. With this in mind, I must admit that I hope the casting for the new Harry Potter series will be more in line with the novels, which is probably why I find the fan casting choice of British actor Ben Barnes to be a rather interesting one. Evidently, fans first put Ben up for the role more than a decade ago, when there was hope that a prequel series focusing on the Marauders may one day get made. Alas, that was not to be, and at this point, Ben would be too old to play a teenage Sirius Black anyway but he's certainly not too old to portray an adult one. With many film and television credits under his belt, from the Chronicles of Narnia to Dorian Gray, and even his most recent role in Netflix's Shadow and Bone, Ben is no stranger to film universes that have been built on loyal fandom and magic. I think he could definitely pull off the haughty yet compassionate complexities of Sirius, and while he looks rather young, Ben Barnes is actually in his early 40s, so his age works. Another option that I think would be worth considering for the role of Sirius Black is Kit Harington. Kit is most well known for his portrayal of Jon Snow in the Game of Thrones television series. He's about the right age, he's got the accent, and his depth of range of emotion has been well established on screen. Of course, both these options only work if Snape is also cast in his 30s, since all of these actors will need to be around the same age. Remus Lupin The beloved werewolf, marauder, and former best friend of James Potter, was originally played by David Dulles. Again, back in the 2000s, I was thrown by this casting choice, as he was quite a bit older than I had pictured him while reading the books. But, as with Gary Oldman, David Dulles did a marvellous job at embodying the character of Remus Lupin, and his age made sense when matched up with the other characters of Snape and Sirius. So, who would I recast in this role? The large majority of fans seem to wish to see Andrew Garfield as the new Remus Lupin, and while he's about the same age as, say, Adam Driver, a fan favourite to play Snape, and Ben Barnes, I'm not so sure I agree. I think if Andrew Garfield does end up in this role, I wouldn't be upset about it, I can see what fans are getting at, but he wouldn't be my first choice. Instead, I'd rather see someone like Daniel Sharman, a lesser known actor born and raised in London, who began his career at the Royal Shakespeare Company. He's about the right age and, to me, he gives off the right balance of compassion and melancholy needed for the role. 
He's also got experience playing a werewolf in the television series Teen Wolf. One other British actor who I think could do well in the role is Joseph Quinn, best known for his role as Eddie Munson in the fourth season of Stranger Things. I think Joseph would be able to embody a warmth of character that perhaps Daniel Sharman's Lupin would lack. That said, Joseph Quinn is in his late 20s and may be too young for the role. Peter Pettigrew Originally portrayed by Timothy Spall, an award-winning classical character actor, this role is a tricky one to cast. Once again, Timothy Spall did an incredible job bringing the character of Wormtail to life. In terms of casting, however, I'd personally like to see the new HBO series focus a little less on the rat-like appearance of Wormtail and more on his actual character. I do understand that the filmmakers were likely trying to showcase what living as a rat for over a decade had done to Peter and his physical attributes, but it all felt a bit much to me. Now, I've seen many fans suggest Dane DeHaan, an American actor, as their top choice for Peter Pettigrew. But to me, Dane is too young looking to play a 30-something-year-old Wormtail, and I haven't seen him perform without his American accent, so I can't comment on his ability to do so. Instead, I would personally cast Jamie Bell, the British actor known for his portrayal of the titular role of Billy in Billy Elliot. Jamie looks about the right age and presents an air of underdogged innocence that I think would perfectly embody Peter Pettigrew, you know, before he betrayed everyone he claimed to care for. I think Jamie would also add a bit of a something to prove chip on his shoulder to his performance, which would keep things interesting and perhaps provide the audience with more insight into why this former marauder betrayed his best friends in favor of a psychopathic wizarding overlord. Professor Sybil Trelawney I must admit that Professor Sybil Trelawney was never a favorite character of mine, that is, until the incredible Emma Thompson was cast as a quirky, somewhat charming version of the witch. In my opinion, Emma provided a hilarity and absurdity to the role that was grounded in a lovable ineptitude. I thought it was brilliant. Whoever fills this role certainly has big shoes to fill. Recasting this character was definitely the most difficult one for me in today's video. I was looking for someone with the ability to be believably useless, entitled, and unknowingly brilliant all at the same time, while also convincingly pulling off the insane attire Sybil chooses to dress herself in. I finally found someone who I think would be an excellent choice for the part of Professor Trelawney, Juno Temple. A seasoned actress with credits dating back to the early 2000s, you'll likely know her from her most recent role as Keely Jones in the Apple TV hit Ted Lasso. She can be innocent, funny, sassy, intelligent, and a whole lot more. I think she would do great things with this role. And with that, we've come to the end of another video. What did you think? Do you agree with my casting choices? Disagree? Who would you like to see playing these characters? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.